Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how to import XML data into R. We'll be using the XML package. If you're short on time, I'll show you a one-liner convenience function that we can use. And if you have a little bit more time, I'll break down the process step by step to get a better feel of the XML data structure and to see how R can process it and which intermediate steps we'll be seeing. First of all, a few words about the XML package. It was written by Duncan Temple Lang. Thomas Calibera contributed to it, and it's now maintained by the CRAN team. And now let's see what the XML data structure can look like. This is an example from Microsoft, Microsoft Docs, um, maybe a famous XML data set, I'm not sure, with 12 books. So um, if you know HTML, this may look a little bit familiar with these tags that we have. So um, we have 12 books in this data set. I'm just showing the first two here, and you see how the fields are described. We have book IDs, and then um, in a hierarchical nested structure below the book IDs, we have um, attributes of each book, like author, title, genre, and so on. So XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. So the ML is the same as in HTML. It's also markup language. And XML defines a set of rules for encoding documents in a format that is both human readable and machine readable. So how, we, how can we read this data into R and create a nice tidy data frame? So we're using the XML package and we can use this one-liner convenience function XML to data frame. And the only argument that we need to provide is the data source. The file here is a string and this is what we get back. For the sake of this presentation, I chose the data table function from the DT package, but you could just use um, the view function or the head function to get a sense of the data. Um, this data table is interactive, so we can navigate through it. We have two books per slide or per page. So six pages, 12 books altogether. So this one liner function really does all the work for us and we get a nice data frame. Each row corresponds to a book and each column corresponds to an attribute or a variable, as we would call it in R. Right, that's basically it, but let's break down the process into steps to get a better feeling of the XML data structure. The first function I want to show you is the XML tree parse function, which parses an XML file and then creates an R structure to represent the so-called XML tree. So we're using this XML tree parse function on the same file as before. And you see that we get XML specific class attributes back. Um, and when we look at the structure of this object, it's a nested list. Note that I reduce the max level that is displayed here in the structure function, str function. So it's a nested list and we can already assume that this format is not very convenient to work with directly in R. Um, so here's a code example for base R code, how to extract the second book. And here you can really see what it means to have a nested list. We have several dollar symbols um, to um, creep down the rabbit hole, we could say, um, and finally arrive at the slot ch children, the second children slot that contains the 12 books. And here I display the second book. If you do have to work with nested list structures in R, you may want to look at the per package, spelled with three R's from the tidyverse. Jenny Bryan has a nice tutorial on how to work with nested lists, and there's the recursive package by Jenny Bryan that contains um, data on the Star Wars um, films that is really fun to work with. But I won't go into any more details here about working with nested lists. Instead, we look at the next function that we can use, the XML root function, to access the root or top level XML node. And again, I display the structure. And again, we have a nested list. Um, so we have this slot children, and it says list of 12. So here, um, since we know we have 12 books, we can assume that the books are stored in this slot children. So we can use the head function on this object, and then it displays us, in this case, the first book. I limited the number of, um, of books to display to one, the n argument in the head function. 
Um, so it still looks very much like XML and not like an R data frame structure that we would like to work with in R. So how can we process this further? Now I'm showing you the XML as supply function. So it's funny how the same ideas keep popping up in R in different topics and in different contexts. So it really makes sense to familiarize yourself with the apply family of functions. And here we have an XML specific variant of this XML as apply. The code may look a little bit dubious at first glance because the XML as apply function appears twice on the top level or the outside function and then inside again in the anonymous function, function x. Um, so we need that function twice. You can use this code as a boilerplate if you have to work with data structures like this. And now we get a matrix back. It's a character matrix and you see we have six rows and 12 columns. So the six rows correspond to the six attributes or variables um, of our data set that we want to um, produce in the end. And the 12 columns correspond to the 12 books. So now each book is a column. So let's look at this a bit more closely. <clears throat> Um, I'm using the cable function here to display it in, um, in this presentation, HTML format. And I'm using the first five rows, so I excluded the description, which is a little bit verbose, and I limit the display to the first two columns, so we see that each column corresponds to a book. So now we have a matrix. This is more convenient to work with than the nested list, but it's still not a data frame as we would like it in R. So what we need to do now as a last step is to transpose this matrix so that the rows turn into columns and vice versa, and then transform it into a data frame. So we're doing this here in plain base R code. I'm combining the data frame function and the T function for transpose. And again, we get a data frame back, the books data frame that looks just the same as the first data frame that we saw in the beginning of the video when we used this one-liner convenience function. I'm using the same data table function from the DT package again to display the data. We have the 12 books again at six pages, two books each per page, so we can navigate this here. So this is the format that we would really like to have in R to work with this data. If there's just one takeaway that you want to have from this video, then I would say it's this one-liner convenience function that we saw in the beginning, XML to data frame, that does all the work. What we did afterwards was just break down the process and get a feeling of how R process this data structure. But um, if you have um, convenient XML files and this function works for you, then this may be all you need. XML to data frame, just specify the data source um, and you should get a data frame back. I must admit that I don't work too much with XML data in my daily work, so if you have more experience, I'd really like to hear about your experiences. Drop me comments, let me know. Uh, maybe you have other packages or issues that you ran into. I'd really like to find out about that. That was it for today. I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. That really helps. All the best for your own data analysis and your data import tasks. See you next time. Ciao.